वेलकम ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इम्पॉर्टेंट रूल्स टू प्लॉट रूट लोकस सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टेन इम्पॉर्टेंट रूल विच शुड बी फॉलोड सिक्वेंशली इन ऑर्डर टू प्लॉट रूट लोकस ऑन टू द एस प्लेन सो द रूल नंबर वन सेज डेट डिटरमाइन ऑल द ओपन लूप पोल्स एंड ओपन लूप जीरोज ऑफ एन ओपन लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन so let's assume that the open loop transfer function g of s is given as k s plus 1 s plus 2 s plus 3 so g of s is a open loop transfer function and uh, firstly we need to determine how many open loop poles and open loop zeros exist so on equating the numerator part to zero we will get open loop zeros and on equating the denominator part to zero we will get open loop poles so open loop poles will be equals to on equating as plus 2 equals to zero we will get as equals to minus 2 so one of our open loop pole is s equals to minus 2 on equating s plus 3 equals to 0 we will get s equals to minus 3 so again we will get another open loop pole that is minus 3 and open loop 0 on equating s plus 1 equals to 0 we will get s equals to minus 1 so it will serve as open loop zero so here there are two open loop poles and one open loop zero from this open loop transfer function that is g of s note that the open loop poles also serve as starting point of the branch of root locus open loop pole also acts like starting point for branch of root locus and this open loop zeros also act as an ending point for the branch of root locus ending point for branch of root locus since the branch of the root locus always starts from open loop poles and terminates at open loop zeros that's why the concept of starting point and ending point is applicable so that here is the branch of the root locus this branch of the root locus it starts from open loop poles that is this is the starting point and this branch of the root locus and at the open loop zeros that will serve as ending point let's discuss rule number 2 rule number 2 says that find the total number of root loci branches so here is an exam here is a rule and formula for the finding total number of root loci branches according to this formula the number of root loci branches is equals to maximum of number of poles and number of zeros this is the basic formula for finding number of root loci branches as in the previous example that we discussed the number of open loop poles were 
that is minus 2 and minus 3 so the number of poles will be 2 only and the zeros were lying at minus 1 so the number of 0 is 1 on putting the value of total number of pole and total number of 0 in that formula we will get maximum of number of pole that is 2 comma number of 0 that is 1 so here maximum of 2 comma 1 will be equals to 2 so from this formula we can easily say that the number of root Loki branches will be equals to 2 discussing the next rule that is rule number 3 rule number 3 says that find the number of asymptotes that exist so the total number of asymptotes can be easily determined by the formula that says that number of poles minus number of zeros so this is the formula moving discussing about the above example that is number of poles so the number of asymptotes will be equal to number of poles that is 2 minus number of zeros that is 1 so here the number of asymptotes will be equal to 1 only so it is a very easy formula for the calculation of number of asymptotes after finding the number of asymptotes according to rule number 4 we have to find the centroid of the asymptotes centroid of asymptote is denoted by the symbol x so here the x can be calculated by this formula that is sum of real part of poles minus sum of real part of zeros divided by total number of poles minus total number of zeros so by this formula we can calculate the centroid of asymptotes after that the next step is calculation of value of m the value of m generally starts from 0 0 and and adds the number of poles minus number of 0 minus 1 so it starts from 0 and reaches to pole minus 0 minus 1 this is the basic formula for the calculation of m after that the next step is determination of the angle of asymptotes so the angle of asymptotes can be calculated by this formula that is 180 multiplied by 2m plus 1 divided by number of poles minus number of 0 here this m that we previously calculated is used here and we can calculate the angle of asymptotes at each and every value of m let's suppose that the value of m is 0 1 and 2 so for this each and every value of m that is for the 0 we will calculate the angle of asymptotes for value of 1 that is we will calculate angle of asymptote also and for 2 also we will calculate angle of asymptote so for each value of m we will calculate angle of asymptote the next step is the finding the root loci lies in which part of real axis we done this part in the earlier lecture also so here is the basic representation of the s plane onto which there are 1 0 that is at minus 1 and 2 poles that is at minus 2 and minus 3 so we divided the area that is first area lies from minus 1 to infinite second area lies from minus 2 to minus 1 third area lies from minus 3 to minus 2 and fourth area lies from minus infinite to minus 3 so firstly we talks about x1 area so in the RHS of the x1 area there are no poles and no zeros that's why x1 
is not a valid area discussing about the x2 in this area x2 the number of zero or the poles that lies in the rhs is equals to 1 because at minus 1 here is 1 0 so 1 0 lies in the rhs and 1 is the odd number that's why it is a valid area discussing about x3 in the area x3 that lies from minus 2 to minus 3 in between this x3 in the rhs of x3 the number of poles or the zeros that lies is equals to 2 because here is one pole and here is one zero so the total number of poles and zero is equals to two since two is an even number that's why it is an invalid area let's discuss about x4 x4 lies from minus three to minus infinite so let's discuss how many poles or zeros lies in the rhs of x4 so there are two poles and one zero lies in the rhs of x4 and three is an odd number that's why we can consider it so it is a valid area so the root loci lies from minus infinite to minus three in this area x4 and the root loci also lies from in the area x2 that is from minus two to minus one these are the two valid area into which the root loci will lie moving on to the next step determination of break in and break away point so the concept of break in point is only applicable in case of two conjugate zeros that lies on the real axis of s plane and the break away point concept is only applicable in case of two conjugate poles that lies on the s plane the breakaway point and the break in point can easily be calculated by the formula dk by ds is equals to zero this is the formula for the basic calculation of break in and breakaway point moving on to the next step the next step number eight is calculate the angle of arrival since the angle of arrival is the concept that will be applicable only in case of imaginary zeros if the zeros lies onto the imaginary axis of the s plane then the, we will calculate angle of arrival step number sec, nine that is calculation of angle of departure and the departure angle is only be calculated if there are poles that lies on the imaginary axis of s plane so here are two poles that lies on the imaginary axis of s plane so in this case only we will consider and calculate the angle of departure the next rule and the final rule of the calculation of root locus is intersection of the root locus branch with the imaginary axis so let's suppose that the root locus lies in this branch in this area that is from minus infinite to minus one because in the rhs of this area here is only one pole that's why it is a valid area for lying root locus and the root locus branch is like this and this root locus branch goes to zero infinite but you all notice that here is an intersection of the branch of the root locus and the imaginary axis here is the imaginary axis so this point of the intersection between the root locus branch and the imaginary axis is known as intersection point so in the rule number 10 or the step number 10 we will finally calculate the point of intersection between the root loci and the imaginary axis thank you